So Matt, how did you end up uh, thinking about AI and sewages? I've had this business in the sewer inspection industry for several years and I've, I've just kind of seen where, where it's going. And I thought I would start a company to uh, specifically inspect pipes using AI. It's interesting, the large pipes make up about 1% of all the pipes in the US and then there's the other 99% which are the smaller pipes. So at any, any given city will have one or two what they call interceptor, these large pipes that run across the city. And then leading into these large interceptor pipes are the mainline pipes. And these are the six inch or eight inch pipes that are running all over residential neighborhoods, commercial neighborhoods. Uh, and that these are, this is the much larger volume of pipes that are out there. Uh, the laser and sonar is typically only done on the larger pipes. They really care about corrosion and information like that. And then in the smaller six inch and eight inch pipes, they really only inspect it with cameras and they're looking for cracks and roots and mineral deposits, anything that you know they see in the small pipes. There's actually about six billion feet uh, of these pipes in the US um, and they're supposed to be inspected about a billion feet of them every year. Why cities have to inspect this uh, sewage pipe? In 2020, which is eight months away, more than half the pipes in the country will be beyond their expected lifetimes. So you install a pipe, it's expected to last 50 years or 75 years or 100 years. And there's pipes that have been in the country for you know, 50, 100, 150 years and they're beyond their expected life. And over time they break and you need to fix them. If you don't fix them, you have sewer overflows, which are like just sewage overflowing into the creeks and waters and oceans around the country. There's actually 131 billion gallons of sewage that's overflowed into the nation's waters every year. The more inspections you can do, the more effectively you can fix the pipes and then you can reduce that sewage overflow. So let's look for a second here at the technology that we intend to use. So mm -hmm. what specific area of uh, uh, you know, AI we're trying to use here and, and uh, why and how? Right, so I mean, the, the, the way the operator works now is he literally has this remote control and he's driving the robot forward. And every time he sees a defect, uh, he has to stop at the defect and literally type into another form uh, what exact defect it is, any particular parameters about it. Um, sometimes he has to look up into uh, this very this book what type what the specific code for the defect is um, there's just kind of like very poor UI UX for doing these inspection work it just tends to be very slow you're driving and you're stopping and looking something up and typing it in and then you go back to driving again and it's just a very very slow part of the process based on like some numbers that we run you know half the time the robot is not driving it's just sitting there while the operator is looking up a code or, you know, taking a smoke break or something, but we, we feel that we can really, you know, double the efficiency of, of the robot driving through the, through the pipes. I think of it as like the classic computer vision classification AI. So you, you're showing uh, an image to the AI and saying, hey, is there a defect in here and what kind of defect is it? The data plus the labels is really the core, the core value or the core expertise that we're we're trying to bring here. In order to build a good a good AI, you need good training data. There's a, a really large QA effort that has to go into the data because a lot of these videos are very old and the, the labels don't line up perfectly. So we have a, a pretty big effort that goes into QAing the data, um, and then from there we put it into the AI algorithms to build the the models. I think. At the end of the day, we're gonna be able to build a system that is A, faster, but B, more accurate and more consistent than uh, what I'll say, like, you know, the average human operators that are out there today. Um, in terms of the workflow, that's a lot of uh, effort that we're looking to put in soon in terms of how are we gonna implement this in the existing workflow. And I think it'll be pretty straightforward. There's, there's a pretty massive industry out there already of both hardware, you know, these trucks and the cameras and the software that the operators are using to do the inspections. And we're hoping to really insert ourselves right in the middle of this existing hardware space and this existing software space to be able to improve the efficiencies by you know, not having the operator look at it and just letting it go as fast as it can run. Where do you see this is going? We, we see ourselves as really trying to automate and improve infrastructure diagnostics 
So that's you know really the, the category of, of the of the company that we're trying to create is automated infrastructure diagnostics. And there's a lot more infrastructure out there than just these underground sewer pipes. There's everything from you know overhead electrical wires, inspecting those, inspecting the trees around them, uh, underground gas pipes, highways. There's a, a cool company called Roadbotics uh, that's doing automated computer vision on highways and roads to look for look for issues there. Is, a, is where the, the future is, is headed.